Okay, this is a chapter four honors problem, something similar to what you could expect to see on the test. I've already drawn it out. We have a table here with a three, three kilogram mass that's sitting on it. Then we also have a five kilogram off to the right that's being attached by a rope and a two kilogram on the left. All of this is gonna act as one system. I'm gonna say there's no friction in this particular problem, so we don't have to worry about that. And I hope most of you would immediately identify that this five kilogram mass on the right hand side is going to cause this thing to accelerate in the clockwise direction, just because it's gonna really overpower the two kilogram. There are a lot of ways to approach these types of problems. Whenever you have something like this, I really think that your best shot is to couple all of the masses together and treat it as one system. So I'm gonna go up here and immediately say that the total mass is gonna be equal to two plus three plus five, or my total mass equal to 10 kilograms. And then I just need to figure out how many extra newtons in one way or the other um, are acting on this 10 kilograms so that I can look at the acceleration of my system. I'm gonna take a little aside here and just start drawing up my forces. You know that on this two kilogram block, there's gotta be an FG that's equal to MG. If I go ahead and just do the mat or do the calculations for that, I'm gonna find that I have two kilograms multiplied by negative 9.8. And so I'm gonna be at negative 19.6 Newtons. Over on the other side here, I have its own, this guy has its own FG and its mass times gravity is gonna lead me to find a negative 49 newtons. That's how I would normally do this, but if we start to look closer at this system, you'll identify that over here on this side of things, this force is actually going to be countering this force over here. And so it's kind of complicated to leave it in this bent system that we're looking at. And what you've hopefully been learning is that usually it's very useful to go ahead and unfold the system and make it into one linear system, which I'm gonna do now. And from then on out, I'm gonna treat it as this linear system. I'm gonna have the FG from the two kilogram block pointing this way, and I'm gonna keep a negative sign on it and call it negative 19.6 Newtons. I have the three kilogram block in the middle, and then I have a five kilogram block on this side. But notice that the force vector from the weight of the five kilogram block is now pointing in the opposite direction of our previous one. And I'm gonna now tag it with a plus sign so that I can keep track of everything. And I'm gonna say that the FG for this guy is positive 49 Newtons. I can immediately say that my F net for this particular system is going to be equal to 49 Newtons minus 19.6 Newtons. Or I can say that my F net, if I just do this arithmetic here, is gonna be 29.4 Newtons. Once I have that piece of information, I'm gonna go back to Newton's second law, and I'm gonna say that that's the net force that's gonna accelerate this entire system. It's gonna be equal to the mass times the acceleration. That net force has to accelerate the entire system, so I'm gonna say 29.4 Newtons is equal to the total 10 kilograms multiplied by the acceleration, or my acceleration is equal to 2.94 meters per second squared. So now I have the acceleration of my system. And we should go in and we should start looking at the components of this problem because now I'm gonna ask that we come in and we find the tension vectors for these two different ropes. Okay, I went ahead and got rid of the original picture because like I said, we wanna really uh, take a look at the unwound system from here on out. I can come in and identify that there are more forces within the system that I didn't originally include because they were all internal. There's a tension, FT, pointing that way on this two kilogram block. There's an equal and opposite tension, it's all part of the same rope, pointing that way from the three kilogram block. I have another tension here and here on those ropes, 
And as I have identified with the notation before, I'm going to say that these guys on the left are FT1s and these guys on the right are FT2s. So my goal is to identify what those forces actually are. To do that, I pick apart the system and I start to look at just one block at a time. So it doesn't really matter what block I start with, although it, maybe you would recognize that if you started with the the three kilogram block right now you'd be left with two unknowns uh, one on the left one on the right and so that's going to be a little bit problematic for us so I need to start either on the left block or the right block but it doesn't really matter which one I'll go ahead and start on the left block so I have two kilograms here I have identified that there is a force of negative 19 point uh, six newtons pushing that way technically that's an FG but again as long as we're just keeping track of what direction the forces are and everything we'll, we'll be okay then there's an FT pointing this way FT1 specifically and I want to figure out what that is luckily I already calculated the acceleration of the system or at least I think I did I'm not seeing it written right now but what I believe I had before from F net equal to mass times acceleration was an F net of 29.4 I'm just going to show it again just in case I didn't have it and then 10 kilograms so I had an acceleration was equal to 2.94 meters per second squared alright that acceleration must be shared for every block that's in this system so I can come up here and I can say that this block is accelerating this way with a magnitude of 2.94 meters per second squared. That acceleration is in the positive direction based on how I've unfolded this entire apparatus and I'm going to use Newton's law to say that F net must be equal to mass but I'm only going to use the mass of this one block here times the acceleration of that one block which happens to be shared between all the blocks. That means that my F net is equal to 5.88 newtons. Now that I have that information, I'll go up and sum my forces and I'll say F net is equal to the FG that's there that's actually pointing to the left plus FT1 and I'll find that 5.88 newtons is equal to negative 19.6 newtons plus FT which means that my FT must be equal to 25.48 newtons that's the FT1 I have that piece of information now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I could isolate either the three block or the five block I'm going to isolate the 5 block, I think, because I want to take advantage of this nice round number in the 49. All right, I've gotten rid of that, and now let's draw a free body diagram for the 5 kilogram block. Here it is. There's an FG from it, which is actually pointing to the right, of positive 49 newtons. There's a FT2 that I don't know that's pointing to the left but I still have my constant acceleration of 2.94 meters per second squared. I will go in and again use Newton's second law. Mass times acceleration, I'm going to go ahead and just plug in my 5 kilograms multiplied by 2.94 meters per second squared. Looks like I forgot an equal sign there from before up top. This gives me that the F net is equal to 14.7 newtons. From here, I will go up and again sum my forces, and I find that the F net for this particular diagram is FT2. I better get a negative number on that because of the leftward pointing vector plus the FG, and I find that 14.7 newtons is equal to FT2 that I'm trying to solve for minus, or I'm sorry, plus 49 newtons. 
subtract 49 from both sides, and we can find that FT2 is equal to minus 34.3. We did indeed get a minus. That's good because of the direction of our vector, and we've now solved for everything. I'll remind you that in this class we use massless ropes, so it doesn't matter what block you isolate. If you solve for, in this case we just solved for FT2, that tension must be the identical tension even if I were to go look at the third block. And then I'd have an FT1 pointing to the left and an FT2 pointing to the right. Those values are going to be the same, although we may flop the signs around. The last thing that I'm going to say about this minus sign, my free body diagram says that the tension needs to point to the left, and that's true. But when people report tension, they normally don't report it with a minus sign because it's understood that tension is always a pull on a rope. So uh, I would love to see the math with that minus sign, but then I would love also to see FT2, the tension is equal to 34.3 newtons. And that's it. Remember, there's some videos for conceptual help and general FNET problems also that you can watch.